Hi everyone, thank you so much for the support on my channel. I really appreciate your likes and comments. Uh, it's really been helping me get back in the algorithm, so thank you guys for that. Um, I just want to say, so this is a continuation of the storyline that we've been getting. The reading I did yesterday, I was feeling like there was a woman that was basically going to give someone a false tarot reading or she was going to send someone to a false psychic because she wants to separate you and this person. So she's actually going to lie in order to separate you two. Like there's a lot of manipulation with this woman. I know that not all of you are in this energy group, so I'm sorry for those of you that are, you know, getting tired of the same old story. I just keep channeling it. It just keeps coming through so strongly. Like, I'll just be sitting there and I'll just start getting the psychic downloads about it. So I am going to try to do a reading tomorrow or the next day for a different energy group. I want to make sure that everyone on my channel is is getting something here. But, um... And you don't have to be in that energy group from yesterday to, to resonate with this reading. You know, as I say, I, I do channel multiple energy groups here. So never try to force it to fit. If it's your reading, you'll know that it's for you. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh, but anyway, the, the, reading, the, the message that I was getting yesterday was that there's a man that is pissed off at you. And he's pissed off at you about, some, about something that you didn't even do. So I feel like for some, it's this information that he got from this woman that was lying to him. Like she told him that you were going to hurt him or she gave him a false tarot reading. She maybe spread a rumor about you. And instead of really thinking for himself, he just believed it. He just was very naive and he just kind of trusted her. And I don't know if naive is the right word, but he just... He, he's not really thinking for himself. He believed this woman. Whatever she said about you, I feel like he believed it and he's angry at you about it. Now, for others, I also feel like he's angry at you because of his own inability to take action towards you. I feel like this is someone that you're not in contact with or if you guys are in contact, it's very minimal. Like you're not, no one's addressing the elephant in the room. It's like you guys aren't saying what needs to be said. You're not communicating clearly. I feel like you're both kind of holding back. You're both keeping things to yourself. You're not saying what you want to say to each other. And I almost feel like he's getting frustrated with himself. He realizes that if he doesn't make a move, he's going to lose you. And instead of blaming himself for it, I almost feel like he's blaming you or he's blaming other people outside of himself. Like he's not looking at his role in this. He's not looking at, you know, how he caused a separation here. Sorry, I'm still nasally. God, I've been, I was sick for a while and I still, my sinuses are still acting up. So just bear with me. I'm not, I don't usually sound like this. I know I keep saying it every reading, like, I'm still nasally, I'm still nasally, but I, I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to last, so hopefully soon my sinuses get clear so you guys can hear me. <laughs> anyway, let's get into this. Let's see what's, what it, what's going on here. Yeah, someone caused some kind of illusion here. You know what I feel? I feel like this person sabotages and I feel like they almost they almost look for things to be wrong in this relationship. They almost how do I explain this? It's like they don't really want to open their heart or they're afraid to open their heart or how do I explain this? It's like they're, they're trying to, they're trying to find the negatives in you. They're looking for the negatives in you because you're very empathetic. You're very loving. You're very pure. You are the queen of cups. And I feel like you bring out this very innocent childlike side in them. 
you you really get them in touch with their romantic feelings. You get in touch with their darker feelings, with their deeper feelings, their lighter feelings, just all their feelings in general. You just get this person in touch with their emotions, with their soul, with their higher self. And this person's not used to someone like that. And so they almost have this, you know, this is too good to be true mentality. There's no way this woman is that empathetic or that down to earth or that loving. There's got to be a catch. It's got to be fake. There's got to be something wrong with her deep down. I'm going to, I'm going to do some digging and get to the truth and find out what's really wrong with this queen of cups. So they get in their head and they sabotage it and they, they almost invent things about you to like, that are, that are wrong with you, but they're not actually who you are. They, they just make false assumptions about you so that they feel justified in sabotaging this very pure, very divine con connection between the two of you. It is unfamiliar to them. You, you seem too good to be true to them. So, so they look for reasons to justify sabotaging this. Um, almost like you're kind of like their unicorn, like you're, they, they have you on this pedestal where it's like, if it were to not work out with you, they couldn't handle it. You know, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. For some of them, I almost feel like they just straight up just pulled something out of their ass to, to believe, to, to make themselves believe that you're not the queen of cups or the queen of swords. Um, I feel like for a while, I feel like they were trying to trigger you. They might have tried to get you out of this energy. Like they tried to challenge you. They tried to set you off. They tried to, it, it's like they were like determined to prove to themselves that you're not this perfect, that you're not this loving, that you're not this queen of cups. Like they were on a mission. They're like, I am going to research this person. I'm going to look into them. You know, there, there's no way it's that simple. There, There's no way that, that it's that good. And there's actually like a soulmate connection here. There's a very divine loving connection here. Um, and they sabotaged it or they're sabotaging it. We'll look more into it. So in the past, I, I feel like, and they could still be doing this. I feel like this might come up in later readings as well. But I, I feel like they were trying to trigger you to prove to themselves that you're not this person. So they might have been trying to push your buttons or giving you the silent treatment or just playing mind games with you to try to get you out of character because it's like they wanted to, to prove something to themselves. They wanted to, they're like, they're like, okay, she's got to be crazy deep down or she's got to be dramatic deep down. There's got to be something else there. I don't, I don't trust this. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. You know, it's like they made you their enemy. You weren't their enemy, though. You were this very gentle, loving queen of cups. And they're like, no, it couldn't be that simple. So I don't feel like they were able to trigger you. Or if they did trigger you, you they might have seen it on your face. Like you might have been sad. You might have been hurt. You might have felt bullied by this person. You might have been upset, um, especially if you're the if you're you are a genuine queen of cups, you know, I, I feel like you didn't understand. It's like, cause you don't do people like that. You're, you're not, that's not your character. And, and so you didn't understand why this person was targeting you like this. And it's like, they're targeting you because they have feelings for you and they don't trust their feelings. Not that that makes it okay, but I'm just saying it is what it is. Um, but anyway, I, I feel like they tried to, like, they wanted to prove that you're crazy or you're dramatic or you have, maybe they wanted to find out a secret about you. Maybe they thought that you were hiding something. It's like, I just feel like they were doing some digging, but they were doing it in like really um, secretive kind of toxic ways. Like, oh, I'm going to get this out of this person. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to see what's really going on down here. Um, and they weren't able to get you out of character. I don't think, like I said, even if you were triggered or upset, I feel like you didn't like freak out on them or you didn't whatever they were trying to prove they couldn't prove and I almost feel like at a certain point they just they either believed this toxic third party that wants to separate you guys this third party that's been lying to them and giving them false tarot readings and misleading them and playing on their insecurities um I, I feel like 
I feel like they either believed that or they just straight up assumed something about you and they took it as truth because Ace of Swords is truth and clarity. And I'm honestly not getting that this is a in this context from when I'm channeling. This is not a genuine truth. This isn't this is to them. This feels like truth and clarity, like it feels genuine, like to them, it's the Ace of Swords. But in reality, it's not the Ace of Swords. I hope that makes sense. Like it, it's not, they're taking it as genuine truth. They're taking it as clarity, as an epiphany. It, it's not actually genuine though. This is a lie or a rumor that they took to be absolute truth. Or this is something for others. This could just be something they assumed about you. Like maybe they maybe maybe your body language or something like they're just making an assumption about you like they assume that you have someone else or that you would just hurt them they're they're just looking for reasons to sabotage this and they're looking for reasons the thing is like this again this is a divine connection this is like a soulmate partnership this this could have been something really good potentially it still could be something really good whether it's friends or lovers whatever it is but um, they're not wanting to look in the mirror. They're not, they're not wanting to take accountability for how they hurt you. They're not wanting to take accountability for how they're sabotaging this. They're wanting to sabotage it and they're wanting to justify it. So they don't want to be the asshole. You know what I mean? Like they don't want to, they might trigger you and push you, but they want you to lash out so that they can be like, oh, see, I knew she was crazy or see, I knew she was kind of a bitch. See, see, there's the truth. They don't want to be the one to leave. They want to trigger you to leave. Um, and then it's it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's, it's self-sabotage. It's a subconscious pattern that this person is repeating. They are blocking themselves from love. They are their own worst enemy. They are doing this to themselves. I feel like you guys might even mirror each other as well. So they might see you guys might you might see toxic traits in them that you have within yourself and vice versa. Um, let's see here. I just feel like they got caught up in this very romantic, emotional, open energy that they weren't used to and they like snapped themselves out of it. And there's like, no, it couldn't be that perfect. But it's like you guys were telepathically communicating. You guys were like that was real. They those feelings were real. They didn't recognize them as real though. They thought it was just a, a dream. They thought they were just daydreaming. But all that potential that they were feeling with you, it's real. That emotion is real, but they they don't have faith in it. Um anyway, I I feel like for for a lot of you, I feel I feel like they couldn't find flaws in you. They couldn't trigger you. They couldn't get that reaction out of you that would justify them running away from this or sabotaging this. And I feel like they invented something. Now, either this is believing that third party about you, just believing their lies because it's it's easier to just believe those lies. It's easier to, you know, instead of taking a leap of faith, they're like, yeah, that that makes sense that she, she is probably this or she is probably that. She's probably toxic. Like they, they want to believe the lies. They feel safer believing those lies. Um, the truth is going to hit them and it's going to hurt. Like when they, they are at some point eventually going to realize that they had true love right in front of their face and they fucked it up because they were scared sooner or later. So anyway, I feel like since they couldn't find anything wrong with you, it's like they they believed those lies or they invented something that was wrong with you. Like they came up with something like they made an assumption based on something you said or did or based on your body language or based on some based on very minimal information. It's like body language or like something you posted on social media. They're like, oh, yeah, I bet she has another man or I bet she's a player or I bet she's. She's a heartbreaker. I bet she's crazy or I bet it's like they're, they're trying to they want to believe that there's some huge negative flaw in you and they're frustrated that they haven't been able to find it. So at this point, they're just like, fuck it. I'll just I'll just I mean, not, it's not like a conscious process, but they're they're basically on some level. They're like, fuck it. I'll just invent something then. I'll, I'll make myself believe she's crazy. You know, she's not going to show me that she is fine. I'll, I'm just going to assume that she is anyway. I'm just going to take this this little social media post and assume she's crazy or I'm going to 
Um, you know, her body language is, is distant. So I'm just going to assume that she's not interested in me. Meanwhile, you could be completely open to this person. You could be completely loving with this person. And maybe you're being distant because you think that they're not interested in you. Maybe you feel like you're bothering them. And so you're trying to be distant to give them their space because you think that they don't even like you. And then they're over here in their head telling themselves like, see, she's bitchy and she's closed off. See, like, see, 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 like, um, like, see, she, she does not even give me the time of day. And they're not looking in the mirror. They're not understanding that you are responding to their energy. You're, you're responding to their words, to their actions. You're the queen of cups. You're very loving, very loyal, very gentle. If someone gives you the safe space to be that way, if someone shows you that interest, if someone supports you, you give them that queen of cups energy. So it's it's almost like they're putting you in an environment or situation where you can't be the queen of cups so that they can tell themselves, see, she's not really the queen of cups. And they're not recognizing their own role in things because it's like a subconscious pattern. It's, it's self-sabotage, you know, like they might act harshly towards you or cold towards you or not show interest. And then you match their energy. You're just simply matching their vibration. You're matching their energy and, and you're thinking, okay, this person's not interested in me. So, you know, she's thinking, okay, this man's not interested in me. So I'm going to pull back. I'm going to give them space. I'm going to leave them alone. Um, I'm, you know, he's being distant. So I, I guess I'll be distant as well. And then it's like, this man isn't even like aware that you're just responding to him being distant. You know, it's like, she's just responding to this man being distant. She's matching his distance and his coldness with distance and coldness herself. She's like, okay, if that's what he wants, I'll leave him alone. Um, and meanwhile, it's like, he's not, it's like, he's oblivious to his own role in this, to his own actions, to his own energy. And he's not even being open with her. And then he's like, see, she's, she's cold and distant. See, like, like he, he puts her in that situation. He sets her up for failure, basically. So whatever this false truth is that he's clinging onto, this false truth that he's believing about you, this, this negative assumption he's making about you. And this could be coming in during the retrograde too, because there is a lot of miscommunication. So there could be a miscommunication that comes up between the two of you. And instead of trying to get to the bottom of it and trying to understand what you really felt or what you really meant, he just assumes the, the worst possible scenario. Because it's like, here he is in his head, four of swords, and then there's a tower moment. World cycle ending, and then he's caught up in this illusion. But it's like, he did this to himself. Tell me more about this. It's like this man looks for the bad in people. The Empress, the Moon, the Ace of Cups. Deep down, he sees you as his unicorn. Um, how do I explain this? It's almost like he feels like you're perfect and it's like frustrating him. But I think it's, it's so strange because at first I was feeling like, you know, like a lot. I, I think this, this process is more conscious than I was even aware of initially. Like I, it's, it's really hard to explain it, but it's like some of it is subconscious, but some of it is conscious or it's almost like, God, how do I word this properly? It's like a lot of it is like subconscious, but some of it is like being brought up to the, to his conscious awareness, but he's not understanding what it is. Um, like there's a lot of, I don't, there's like a lot of weird mental processes going on with this man. It, it's almost like. It's like he gets frustrated with how perfect he thinks you are and he gets upset about it because he's like, well, I don't think I could ever be her equal. She's the empress. She's all four queens combined. 
she's, you know, a very powerful woman, very amazing. I don't know if I could be the emperor. And then it's like he gets emotional and he gets upset because he's like, this is like my dream woman. I don't know how to match her energy, though. I don't know if I would be enough for her. I don't know if she would want to stay with me long term. I don't know if she would just leave me for another man in the end or if she if, if I would be if I would be able to match her energy, if I would really be able to make her happy. It, it's like he's worried about those things. Um And then it's like, that's where he kind of goes back and forth between being like consciously aware of, of what's going on, of these patterns. And then like, sub, like a lot of it's like in the subconscious too, where it's like, he gets tired of being in that sad kind of mopey energy. And then he's like, it, it's almost like part of him like shuts down or part of him is like a like goes to sleep after that. Does that make sense to you guys? Um, because it's like after, after you know, he gets tired of feeling that way. So then he's like, no, like, no, I bet she's crazier. I bet she has this flaw. It's like he, he doesn't he doesn't know how to level up. He doesn't know how to apologize to you, how to how to match your energy, how to step up for you, how to how to be your equal. He doesn't know if he's enough. Um, so he's trying to bring you down to, to his level He's trying to bring you down and he's not at a lower level, but he perceives himself to be at a lower level. And then this reading got like very psychological. So I hope you guys are, are keeping up here with this. I know, I know it's a lot of information, but, um, but yeah, it's like he feels that way. And then part of him just shuts off. Like part of him just goes back to the other, you know, the other side of things. And he looks at it like, no, like she can't be that perfect. Because if he sees you as that perfect, he either, you know, it's kind of like the lesser of two evils. Like he either, you know, A, has to change himself and has to work on himself and be a better man and grow up and mature and be vulnerable with you and make an effort for you if he wants to have a relationship with you. Or B, he has to, you know, just accept that you're perfect and you're his unicorn, you're his dream girl, but that he's not good enough for you. And both those options terrify him. So, you know, he, he decides to, to switch his perspective. He like, he shuts that perspective down and he looks at it in, in a different way. He's like, no, she's, she's crazy deep down. She's, she's, there's gotta be a flaw with her. Like he knows, he, he knows that if he accepts that you really are this empress, that you really are this dream girl, he knows he's never going to be able to let it go. He knows he's never going to find someone else like you. And so he doesn't want to believe that you are this empress, even though deep down intuitively he knows that you are. Um, so, yeah, it's like he looks for these flaws in you, but he's not finding any. So he's getting frustrated with that process. And now he's just creating these imaginary flaws like and he's telling himself all these like negative stories that aren't actually true, like. It's like deep down what's hidden is like that he sees you this way, but he feels like if he were to make you a love offer that you would leave him at some point, that you would cheat on him or that he just wouldn't be enough for you. I don't think this man realizes that, you know, you guys are, there is a soulmate connection here. There is real love here. Like, I don't feel like you would break his heart. I don't feel like you would leave him in the cold. I, I feel like he could match you. I feel like you were sent into this man's life. Um, partially, I mean, partially because it's like there's that soulmate bond. Like you guys have that the past life connection. And deep down, he knows that. He knows that there's something real there. But I, I just feel like... I almost feel like he was meant to learn... How did I word this? Sorry. I'm not usually so like all over the place. There's just so much information. Like his thought process right now is so complex. Like he's in such this, just really analytical, like really in his head about all this really like, like almost like a neurotic energy. Like he, he's not able to see clearly. He's in this energy of illusion or he's about to be, this could be coming in the near future. Um, be careful, be careful of miscommunications during retrograde because this man is going to run with them. If you guys miscommunicate, I hate to say it, but he's not going to try to understand you. So he's just going to be like, oh, there's my confirmation. Like, 
you know, she had a bad day and she lashed, lashed out. There's my confirmation. She's a crazy bitch. You know what I mean? Like, he, he, like he's not understanding. Um, he's determined to find fault in you, to find flaws in you. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's, it's like he's telling himself that if he were to come for that and offer you something that you would, you would hurt him or you would leave him. But I don't think it's the case. I actually feel like this man was meant to get karmically ready for you. Like he was meant to go through certain karmic lessons. And when you guys met, he was meant to be prepared for you to already be that emperor to be on your level. And you guys would grow and evolve together. But I feel like it's like those soul contracts got rewritten or he broke those soul contracts in the past, like over the past several years or however long it's been. I feel like he went down a more karmic path and I feel like he was stubborn and he took a lot longer than he was meant to to learn his karmic lessons. Some of those karmic lessons he still has not even learned, you know, so it's like it was divine. It, it was destiny that you guys met when you met but originally in the original soul contract the original plan he was meant to be much more evolved than he is now he was meant to be ready for you but he's actually not ready for you because of the the choices that he's made over the last few years or even longer and I almost think it got to a point where it's like nothing was teaching him he was refusing to mature to evolve to open his mind up and it, it almost got to that point where it was like your energy, your empress energy was needed. Like he needed that to be able to trigger him into growth. Like his spirit guides were hoping to have him ready for you. But instead, it's almost like they needed you to get him ready for you. Does that, does that make sense? <laughs> um, you are getting him ready for you. Your energy is getting him ready for you. But he has to stop telling himself these negative stories. He has to stop holding on to these negative stories. He has to stop holding on to miscommunication. He's got to stop looking for the worst in people. Um, he's got to stop, stop like these subconscious patterns, this, this self-sabotage. Because I feel like you do have love for this man. I feel like you, you care about him a lot. Um... Again, I feel like you're just keeping your distance because he's distant. You're not talking to him because he's not talking to you. You're you're matching his energy. Um, and again, instead of instead of taking responsibility for that and being like, oh hey, maybe if I was open with her, maybe she would be open back. He's he's not. He's being cold and distant, and you're responding to that. And then he's like, oh see, like see, she's cold and distant. It's like, well, like yeah, duh, of course she is. You're being cold and distant. What do you think she's gonna do? Be be vulnerable and open and and chase you when you're emotionally unavailable and you're running away? She's not gonna chase you. She's an empress. So so he needs to recognize that you're just matching his energy. You're just responding to his energy. You know, if he's acting like he's uninterested, you're gonna believe that he's uninterested, and you're gonna. You're not going to, you're not going to chase him. The ball is in his court. He's telling himself the ball is in your court, but the ball is actually in his court. It is up to you or it is up to this man to give this empress an opening. Otherwise that door is going to end up just staying shut. But I mean, you're here, your power, your presence, your love, your light, your your good energy is here to pave the way for this man, to be an example for him. Like he is capable of maturing, of being a better person, of being a more em empathetic person, of following your lead in, in those ways and matching your energy. He doesn't recognize that though, but he is capable of being your equal. This is like a potential power couple, potential true love, soulmates. Like there could be something really beautiful here. There could be something really good here if he's willing to, to rise to the call of the empress. If he's, if he's willing to open himself up to be vulnerable, to make those changes, um, then he can have something really beautiful here. Tell me more about this. Sorry, my sinuses. <laughs> you 
Yeah, it's almost like he feels like like the sun is like the most positive card in the deck. It's like it's happiness, it's warmth, it's love, it's it's just all this good energy. But he doesn't realize that he can get this energy. He can win this empress over by being genuine, by being vulnerable, by pursuing her, by talking to her. That's what's going to win this empress over. Emotional availability is what's going to win this empress over. Communicating with her, showing an effort for her, showing her that you care about her, showing her that you actually want to be a part of her life. Those are the things that are going to get her to open up and to really you know, fall very deeply in love with this man. But he he doesn't feel like it could possibly be that easy. And so he's making it complicated. And he's like, I have to get the, this sun, this warmth, this this good energy, I can only get it through deception, through lying, through mind games. Like he's going about things all the wrong way. Yeah, going about trying to get his wish fulfillment in, in the wrong ways. It's like there is potential loyalty and stability. There is true love here, but he blocks himself by playing these games. His insecurities block him. His fears and doubts block him. His third parties, all of that. It's like he's doing this to himself. He is blocking himself from true love. He is the only one to blame for blocking himself from true love. He can make the decision like today to be like, I'm going to call her. I'm going to message her. I'm going to invite her out. I want to see her. And they, he would be amazed at how vulnerable and loving and open she would be with him. He would be amazed at how simple it is. But instead, at the moment, he's choosing to try to get her attention and her energy in toxic ways, playing games things that are actually really just turning her off and making her feel like, she, you know, like he's not even interested in her. So, I mean, we'll see how this story progresses. This is what's going on right now, at least. I hope this resonates for you guys. I hope it makes sense. And again, I appreciate your comments. Um, it really helps me get back in the algorithm when you guys like the video or even just leave a heart comment below when you guys share the video. I, it really means a lot to me. Thank you guys for the support.